So what we have right now with our simple draw program is perfectly acceptable. And the nice thing about the way it's currently structured is that the uh, interface, the public interface is minimal. So um, the only thing that we have available on shape is just these two methods. There are no publicly accessible properties here. Um, same with the rectangle. We just have a draw method and no publicly accessible properties. Same thing with circle and so on. So in terms of keeping the interface minimal, which is what you want, um, this is about as good as you can get. The reason you want the interface to be minimal is because the less that you expose in your interface, the more flexibility it gives you as a developer to re-implement the interface without breaking somebody else's code. But there is a downside here as well for certain kinds of programs. Now think about what happens, for example, if you create a scene that has um, thousands or even hundreds of thousands of circles. Every circle you create is going to create a new anonymous function with a closure with some values, which we'll talk about next week, um, that's set as the draw method for that object. So you can have hundreds of thousands of copies of this draw function. And same thing with this draw function and this draw function and so on. And so on. So the bottom line here is that while this is pretty good as far as um, data encapsulation, it's not very good in terms of memory efficiency. So if we're willing to trade some of our encapsulation for memory efficiency, then there's a way to restructure this program. Now, I'll start with this uh, square shape. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do, instead of creating a new draw method every time I create a new square shape object, what I'm going to do instead is put the draw method on the square shape prototype. And then any square shape object I have is automatically going to inherit this method. So I only have one copy of the method on my prototype instead of having one copy of the method on every single square shape object I create. So to do that, I'm going to go square shape dot prototype dot draw is equal to, and then I put this function in. And then I can get rid of the draw method here. Now, here's the problem. This uh, function, there's only one of it, and it's going to be looking at msuper.draw. But there is no msuper.draw in this scope. msuper.draw is a local variable inside of square shape. So if I want to give my method access to this object, I have to set it as a property on my square shape object. So I set this dot super is equal to a new rectangle shape. And then here I say this, this dot super dot draw. So let me go ahead and run it. And I get the same result as before, so it still works. And now I only have one copy of the draw method, but the downside here is that now anybody who wants to write code can access my super object and can override the draw method and can mess with whatever else. So let's go ahead and do that with triangle shape. I'm going to go ahead and move all of this code out into triangle shape dot prototype dot draw is equal to this function. And then once again, I have m properties as well as m shape that both have to be public now. So first, let me change all the m properties to this dot properties. And then instead of having a local variable, I'm going to set a 
property called properties on the object. And then I have to do the same thing with M super. And reload. Go to console. Rectangle shape is not defined. Ah, uh, my indentation was off. Let me fix that. And then I have an extra closed curly bracket. So let's go ahead and reload. All right, so it works again. So now instead of having a copy of this entire function for each object, I only have one copy. So this is kind of a big function. Let's do the same thing here. So I have one draw method, fix the indentation, and then I have to change all of the end properties. And I also have to change this M super. So that's good. And then rectangle shape. And we'll run this one. Still works. And let's look at the shape class. So uh, this time we're going to have a scale method. So already this dot scale. So that's not a big impact. And then the draw method. And then this dot properties. And we have that twice. And as long as I'm here, I really need to move that into shape type. And then scene. So scene has to have access to M shapes.
and then add Again, got a little error. Oh, I missed an M shapes and scene. Oh, right there. There we go. And let's take a look at view. So we only have one view, so we're not going to get a huge advantage by moving it up. But let's go ahead and do it anyhow, just for practice. So let's get a create scene. So we're going to need M scene to be this dot scene. And then redraw. Size mm, get rid of that. So I think that should be everything. Let's go ahead and try it. Still works. So we don't have anything that needs changing here. That's done. That's done. That's done. I think that's everything. So now we've made more stuff public, but we're about as memory efficient as we can get. So that's an alternative way of laying out the code. Now there's one additional optimization we can make. If we start, look at the rectangle shape for a second, we see that when you construct a rectangle, you create a new um, shape object, and then you delegate to the shape object and ask it to draw. And the reason we had to do it that way before was because this draw method needed access to M properties, which was a local variable inside the constructor for shape. So before we had M, uh, M properties, defined here as a variable, and then the draw method was accessing M properties. But now that the properties are stored on the object as a property, you can say this.properties and it will work. We don't actually need to create a, a new object to delegate to anymore. So we can get rid of this line. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to call shape.prototype.draw. So this returns the method, and then we're going to call that on this object. So we'll be using the properties on this object instead of needing a separate parent object. So let's go ahead and see if it still works. And it does. So let's do that with the circles now. So I'm going to get rid of the super, and here I'm going to call shape.prototype.draw.call on this. And it still works. Let's do triangles.
shape that prototype that draw that call on this still works. And it looks like the square shape. So this one's a little different, but should still work. So let's call let's set this dot properties equal to properties and then since we're already inheriting from rectangle our draw should just be the same so we can get rid of that entirely and it should still work and it does So that's about as good as we can do as far as memory allocation goes. Um, you need a new scene for the view. You need an array of shapes for the scene. You need properties for each shape. Properties for rectangle, but we're not creating another set of properties for the shape. Properties, properties, this is frozen, and properties. So I think that's about it.